Ito na siya, si Poco F5 non-pro version. Nalala niyo ba si Poco F5 Pro? Dami kong views doon. And sold out po siya. The hype was all for the Poco F5 Pro. Kaya lang si Poco F5, hindi po na sold out. At sa ito na, meron ng video, so mas sold out siya. But kidding aside, si Poco F5 po ay napaganda po ng gaming phone. Yes, it is a gaming phone. Pero, all around flagship killer daw siya. Titignan natin. It may not have the beastly specs of the pro version. But, after reviewing it for a week, sobrang gandang ganda kami. For gaming, for pictures, for pretty much everything. Lalo na, for watching movies and videos. Kaya, let's check it out. Upload to Beans, and you're watching Unbox Ladies. Woohoo! Oh, by the way, if you wanna check out the full specs of this phone, Punta lang sa unboxdiaries.com We've got it all for you So ito yung box no? Pro version, non-pro Wala lang siyang pro We have here the black color I got the pro version of white Meron po siyang 12 gigs of RAM 256 gigabytes of ROM Actually marami silang variant na available 5G na po ito no? By the way, yung kanyang processor pala ay sobrang ang ganda Bagong bago po ito, Snapdragon 7 Plus Gen 2 Almost 1 million points on Tutu Benchmark Here is the box SIM ejector pin Uy, matami ito ah Kasi global Maraming languages Warranty card Safety information And the quick start guide Uy, box type Gel case By the way, I failed to mention that this is actually the Redmi Note 12 Turbo Edition Sa China Rebranded po si Poco F5 I actually reviewed the Harry Potter version Last month pala yun And underneath We're getting USB Type-C cable and the 67 watt fast charger and that is pretty much it by the way 5000 milliamperes pala kanyang battery not as big as the pro version but it does have a fast 67 watts charging it's not the fastest i've seen from xiaomi ito na po yung phone look at that from afar it looks a very simple black design mukhang simple yung black design lang po siya but if you look closely tinan niyo po guys meron po siyang carbon fiber design yung mga pa stripe stripe na yan mga checkered checkered na sobrang liit meaning parang gaming phone yung kanyang dating kasi pag tinanong mo merong carbon fiber it talks about speed gaming speed mga kotse yung naka-carbon fiber diba yung mga mabilis and usually mga gaming phone naka-carbon fiber talaga yun halos lahat even my table is carbon fiber look at this carbon fiber design the back is glossy no so kung wala kang jelly case magkakaroon na maraming smudge sa likod itang kita yan sa black color do you have a white color aso tatlo yung color niya syempre nakita nyo na to no sa Redmi Note 12 Turbo Harry Potter Edition ko ganito po yung itsura ng camera it's very simple simple na pero ang blade aesthetic dun sa kanyang gilid yung pabilog na yan we've got here a 64 MP camera pretty much the same as the pro version meron pa siyang 8 MP ultra wide angle camera and a 2 MP macro lens meron siyang 2 tone LED flash we got here the Poco F5 tapos yung CE andyan po sa ilalim I gotta say in terms of yung kanyang aesthetic malayong malayo siya kay pro version ito po si pro ito po si non pro ito parang pang flagship design flagship feels. It's also much bulkier, si Pro version. Mas mataba po siya, mas curved. Ito, medyo box type, no? Pansin ko, box type pala itong si non-Pro version. At ang nipis niya. Also, mas magaan siya. Bigot naman itong Pro version. But yes, this is more of a gaming speedy phone and this one is all around flagship killer-like phone. Ito po yung itsura kapag naglalaro ka. Arte. Parang pangit. Wrong channel. But yes, what is this? Si non-pro version ay merong headphone jack. Poco has included a headphone jack. Kasi pag umabot na ng 20,000 yung phone, wala na pong headphone jack. Which is something na nire-reserve na lang sa mga mid-range phones, entry-level headphone jack yan. It does have high-res audio, 24-bit. 192kHz po yan, high-res audio. Perfect for gaming, no? Kung gusto mo lang merong headset, pwede may plug dito kung high quality yung headset mo. And it supports high-res audio, mas kaganda po yung sound quality. And not only that, it has one, two speakers. So, dual speaker setup po siya. Dito po sa taas, meron po siyang microphone. The IR blaster. Sa right side, yung kanyang power button and volume rocker. Sa left side, wala. Sa ilalim, yung kanyang other speaker. USB type support, microphone, and the SIM tray. And we've got here, uy, yun lang. Dual nano SIM card slot Wala pa siyang micro SD card slot Pero Naka 256GB of ROM naman ako dito So marami na pwede ma-install dito Kahit wala akong extra storage Pero ito 
Ito yung pinaka-favorite part ko dito sa phone na to. Which is yung kanyang display. The display is surprisingly much wider, much more immersive than the Pro version. It is a 6.67 inch 1080p AMOLED display na merong HDR10+, Dolby Vision, 68 billion colors, and 120 hertz refresh rate. Pero to guys ah, kinompare ko siya sa Pro version. Si Pro version yung kanyang display ay hugis sabon. Medyo curvy yung gilid. Ito naman tong si non-pro. Medyo rectangle. Mas malawak po yung kanyang curve dun sa gilid-gilidan. Yun lang, yung kanyang punch hole ay medyo mas malaki ng konti. Kunting konti lang compared dun sa pro version. Umaabot po siya ng 1,000 nits of peak brightness. And yes, kasing bright niya lang si pro version in terms of brightness. Kung naalala nyo pa yung aking Poco F5 Pro video, alam nyo na na sobrang in love ako sa kanyang display. The display on that phone is just so Next level. Napaganda ng contrast, super nagpapapping colors. Everything looks beautiful on the Poco F5 Pro and it's pretty much the same on the non-pro version. Yun nga lang, iba na yung shape niya. Parang feeling ko, display na lang siya when you're viewing it, not a phone that you're holding. It could go as high as up to 2160, 60 frames per second HDR sa YouTube. Ito ba yung tura niyan? And all I can say is parang nagpapa, parang lumalabas yung video sa mismong display niya. Parang embossed, no? Parang, parang, I don't know, may 3D effect, parang ganun. Although yung display niya is hindi as high resolution as the Pro version, umabot po ng 1440p si Pro. Ito 1080 lang, pero grabe ang sharp niya. By the way, same lang din siya as the Pro version, which is not using Samsung AMOLED anymore. That's right. Dati kasi nag Samsung AMOLED pa si, si Xiaomi, and it usually brings up the price ng sobra. Kaya nagmamahal nyo ka na ng phones, hindi, hindi na sulit dati. But now, kumuha sila ng Chinese supplier na gumagawa ng magandang AMOLED displays din, mas nakamura sila. And so far, napaganda na quality na nakuha nila from this supplier. I don't know kung sa Java to parang lagi naka-on yung extra resolution sa videos, extra pop. Kasi parang ang smooth tingnan, parang lumalabas ng super realistic yung mga videos na napapagod ko dito. But... It lacks the extra settings nung sa pro version, yung parang AI, image, MC, mga ganon. Baka lagi naka-on yun dito, ah. Yun lang, mas marami kang control sa pro version. Well, it's the pro version. You're gonna pay more for the pro variant. But as for me, nako, ang ganda. Almost pretty much everything is napaganda. Kala ko pa ba yung mga extra settings na yun? At hindi ko ma-distinguish yung 1440p display dito sa 1080p ni non-pro. By the way, the AMOLED display is just excellent at what it does. Yung white, sobrang white, no? Pure white. The black's pure black. You won't see anything grayish dun sa kanyang pagka-black or pagka-white. At yun na nga, napaganda pa ng shape niya. Whenever you're playing games, watching movies, especially sa movies, ha? Grabe yung immersion dito. Speaking of immersion, nakaka-add ng immersion yung kanyang napaganda speakers, no? The speakers has that surround sound 180 degree. Kasi nga, stereo siya and it it provides that extra, extra sound effect that you usually find. Yun nga lang, ang problema, hindi po ganun kalakas yung speakers. It is, uh, hindi ganun kalakas ka ng BB. Yun na naman. Which is, kapag meron kayong kasama sa kwarto na may ibang pinapanood, may nagsasalita, hindi siya ganun ka-audible. So, best watch in a silent room or, or used in a silent room. Well, buto naman, naglagay sila ng headphone jack. So, para naman magamit yung headphone jack. Para pag nanonood ka ng Viva Max, kaya ma maririnig. <laughs> Bakit? Ano ba pinaparoon si Viva Max? Pinaparoon ko lang yung mga action ni FPJ din eh. Google! Marinig kita sa mukha eh! Ano pong action star yung pinaparoon nyo sa Viva Max? Di ba ba? Si Jay Manalo. <laughs> Jay Manalo, alam soon. What? Ba't kayo magkakolab? Ba't yung ano niya? Ba't kasama niya? Right now, this is the best Viva Max phone. Aside from Viva Max, this is also a great Netflix phone. Watching movies is just going to be a joy. Kasi may HDR na pala siya guys. So, if merong HDR or Dolby Vision video, mapaprocess niya yun at magagamit niya yung HDR capabilities ng phone which will give you a much brighter image, much clearer, at mas maraming details kayo makikita sa mga dark parts and even sa mga bright parts ng video. Now, syempre, I'm pretty sure you're excited to know if this actually fast, kumusta naman yung performance niya? Now, tulad ng sinabi ko earlier, umaabot siya ng almost 1 million points sa Antutu benchmark. Here it is. 944,000 points sa Antutu benchmark. Wow. Sobrang tindi. Ang speed na to ay Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 noong siya namabas noong 2021. Okay, so since parang pang gaming phone doon yung kanyang vibes based on the design, the specs, and things like that, gaming ba talaga siya? Sa Mobile Legends, ito pa yung itsura niya. Right out of the box, just like the Pro version, kompleto po, sobrang optimized po for Mobile Legends. Nagulat po kami, ganda ng graphics. Dare I say, mas maganda pa yung graphics sa kaysa iPhone 
14 Pro Max ko in terms of playing this game. Like, sobrang na blown away ako sa nakita ko. Sobrang smooth yung tingnan. Walang FPS drops. You will get a flagship like when you're playing Mobile Legends on this phone. Meron siyang agad Ultra graphics, ultra refresh rate right out of the box. And with these settings, wala pong problema sa kanyang performance. Smooth na smooth po. And parang feeling ko, parang mas, mas smooth talaga siya compared sa iPhone 14 Pro Max ko. Parang perfect siya sa mga esports games. Yung parang gusto, kung gusto mo ng competitive gameplay talaga. Sa malaking advantage yung 120 FPS gaming. Perfecto sa mga mabilis gumalaw, yung mga fast hands, no? Especially sa mga high sa users. Gusho, yan. Perfect yan sa mga combo. Kapag fast hands ka, kailangan mo nitong phone na to. Sa Call of Duty naman, ganun din. Sobrang optimized. Napag nagawa ni Poco. Parang nagbahay lang sila ni, ni Call of Duty at ni Mobile Legends. Kaya ganito ka optimized. Or best friends kayo. Or is it run by the same company? But yes, meron pa siya 90 frames per second setting dito. Kaya lang low graphics lang po siya. Yes, meron na bang ibang phone dyan na tumaas ng low graphics kapag nag 90 FPS? Well, there is. Yung Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 2 on another phone that I reviewed before. Medium graphics naman siya. So, <laughs> it depends on the processor din. So, the Snapdragon 7 plus gen 2 can only play in the 90 fps mode and so far sobrang smooth naman siya any competitive gamer no dito sa call of duty would rather go for the low graphics and the 90 fps para mas may advantage kasi nga mas mabilis yung reaction walang ghosting if that happens mas mataas yung chance mo na makapatay o makailag ng mga bala alam mo na yun parang matrix no parang everything is just so slow because you're too fast but yes the graphics in this game if you decide na 60 fps lang siya na pwede mo siya very high graphics very high refresh rate 60 fps maganda po yung graphics niya if you just want to play this game at the highest fidelity possible you will enjoy it nakatagdag pa yung kanyang napagandang sounds yung immersion thanks to that stereo speakers napansin ko lang medyo nag warm siya ng konti medyo, medyo lang nag warm ng konti kapag uh, naka 90 fps mode very high graphics mga ganun na speaking of umiinit isang game na yung ng ganun, which is the Genshin Impact. So we tried out playing Genshin Impact on this device. 60 FPS, max settings lahat. And after 10 minutes of playing, no, uh, nagiging 37 siya, 38. Pero mabot po siya ng 40 degrees. Yung po yung pinaka-peak niya, 40, 41. Depending kung nasaan po kayo sa game. No? Kung maraming pong nangyayari sa display, may, may boss po. Kung maraming animations, dun siya umiinit ng konti. Kaka mabot po siya ng 42 degrees. It's not as efficient in cooling compared to Skype Pro. Ito talaga yung the ultimate gaming phone for me. Nag-Genshin yung pa ako dito. Ang smooth niya, hindi siya ganun kainit. Like plus 3 degrees Celsius to compared to this one. Mas comfortable pa ako dito maglaro ng games. Kaya naman dadagdag mo sa, sa budget mo kung ito yung bibili mo, ba? Graphics-wise, smooth naman siya. Napakaganda pa ng graphics dito. <clears throat> Dare I say is almost the same as the Pro version in terms of yung graphics. Magka-frame drops na lang siya kapag ka maraming animation, maraming nangyayari sa screen, and kapag pumasok ka sa bagong area. Now, the camera is also important, no? Hindi naman pwedeng puro games na lang. This is something na na-master din ni Poco. Even the Poco Phone F1 dati, yung pinakaunang Poco Phone, actually had really excellent cameras. The same can be said with the brand new Poco F5 series. Pero mas maganda yung camera nito. Maganda yung camera nito. Mas accurate, mas... Uh, it's punchy, it's marami kang pwedeng gawin. But here are the photos we got with the Poco F5. At first glance, mataas po ng sobra yung kanyang contrast. No? Everything looks quite punchy, sharp yung mga photos, malakas yung dating. It does look quite processed no? in our eyes kasi um, real cameras don't do this. No? May mga extra AI enhancement na ginawa dito after taking the photo. Uh, especially sa mga tao na pictures, no? it may smoothening sa skin. Um, background blur, mga ganun. Pero overall, ito yung tipong camera na isang picture lang, sobrang enhanced, sobrang ang sarap ipost sa Instagram kasi malakas yung dating nung subject dito. Pero naman talaga dapat eh, kasi hindi naman lahat expert sa photography. Dati ka lang pa ng extra techniques dito eh. Even post-editing to achieve this kind of uh, photo quality. But now, anybody can have looking images like this one with the Poco F5. Ito yung mga low-light images niya. Yun lang, off yung colors niya dahil nga sobr uh, nasobrahan sa enhancement. Off yung colors sa low-light. Even sa okay yung lighting, medyo sobra nasobrahan sa contrast talaga. Siguro yung display lang to ng phone, I'm sure, baka, baka lang. And by the way, here is the video pala ang kaya lang po ni Snapdragon 7 Plus Gen 2. Processor ay 4K 30 frames per second. Here it is. Yun lang, no? Uh, Wala siyang stabilization sa 4K 30fps. Meron na siyang stabilization sa 1080p 30 frames per second. So, ito medyo na ng 30fps, no? Smooth siya with the stabilization on. Perfect for vlogging. Perfect for cinematic videos. Kaya lang, dapat kayo mag 60 frames per second at least. Tapos marami kayong magawa sa post-editing. But yes, pwede kayo mag-vlog dito. Maganda mag-vlog po sa Poco F5. I can highly recommend it. Yun nga lang, no? kapag ka masyado malakas yung ilaw, 
uh, tinik yung araw, nag-overexpose halos lahat. Nakita mo yung overexposure in parts of the image, like yung simento, yung leaves, ayun. Na-overexpose naman siya ng konti. Uh, I feel this is yung sakit din ni Xiaomi 13, no? Nakikita ko rin sa mga videos niya compared sa other brands, medyo overexposed siya in comparison to flagship na ibang brands. And yes, meron siyang promo dito for extra settings kung gusto mo ng more control sa inyong creativity. May night mode po siya, may uh, 64MP mode, vlog mode, long exposure, time lapse, and things like that. Nothing too mind-blowing. It's pretty much basic mid-range stuff from Xiaomi or Poco. Pricing is important. It will make or break the product. That's why ito din pricing ng Poco F5. 20,999 pesos para sa 8 to 5.6. Yung base variant. Uy, 2.5.6 agad. Base variant pa lang. 22,000 naman. 999 pesos. So, kanyang 12 2.5.6. So, kung kailangan ng 12 GB of RAM. Add ka lang 2K. And you get this much better variant. Now, for me, well, alam nyo na yan. 20,000. Pag pumasok lang sa 20,000, ibang, ibang, ano na yan, uh, segment na yan. Siguro nabili mo siya nung early bird. 18K lang siya, guys, nung early bird price. But right now, it's 21K in Shopee and Zada. Magkaya pa si Poco Phone F1 dati, di ba? <laughs> 18? And then, naka-flagship na talaga siya. Well, hindi ko naman sila masisisi, no? Kasi yung inflation ngayon ay napakataas. Some brands, actually need to like taas ng price if this was actually 18k yung yung base sa sarang like offer sila ng 8128 diba mas okay yun mas abot kaya mas accessible sa mga tao to kung merong 8128 yun na naman but yes 20k is a different segment may kung mag-ask ka ng umuutang ka diba pwede mo pa utang ng 18k kaya pa diba pwede mo pa umuutang ng 20k o iba na yun it sounds different pero kung i-home credit mo naman to wala problema kung utangan mo or babayaran mo siya ng installment no problem yun as for me yes this is the best gaming phone right now for the price not X4 GT level parang X4 GT pa rin <laughs> pero last year kasi yun eh but this year, this is the best money can buy in 2023. If you want to see the rank of the Poco F5 sa aming website, just check it out. UnboxDiaries.com. We got it all for you. And as always, if you want to see more Poco phone reviews, just like this or my bang Xiaomi phones, mag subscribe, hit the bell icon so that you don't miss any of my free content. And you're watching Unbox Diaries. Uh -huh.